Welcome food fans, picky eaters, the flavor curious, and everyone in between. Nothing makes good food better than good conversation. And your table is ready. Come right this way to the Food for Thoughtcast with your host, Melissa Reagan. But you can call her chef. All right, let's get this episode started. Hey there, food fans. Welcome back to the Food for Thought cast with me, your host, Melissa Reagan, and my co-host with the most, Chef Stephen Gonzalez. Hey, Steve. Hi, how's it going? Pretty good, pretty good. How are you? Uh, I'm having a case of the Mondays, but it's, you know what? It's, it's a good a Monday. day. Monday. Every it's day that ends with a Y Monday. is a good day. So we always, anybody who's listening out there, we never record on the same day ever it's just it just depends on what's going on but today happens to be a monday and it was a very it was like the mondayest of a monday the mondays <laughs> like, it was a very monday monday <laughs> the monday so, mondays be mondaying you know this what monday's is? gonna monday yo um steve what was the most amazing thing that you ate last week um you know what i being into this new diet, I'm going to say the most amazing thing I had last week. <laughs> That's I actually right. got to, so it's all meal prep and you're trying to like eat clean and healthy, but every now and then you get a little bit of red meat. So, you know, mm-hmm. a nice prime sirloin with some good kale and, uh, and some avocado, even though it's like, I'm not going like keto or anything like that. It's just like, it's what's on my diet. And so when you do it right, you add just enough acid, like, in this case, it, I've learned red wine vinegar tastes better than lemon juice on avocado after a little while. Yeah. But that, yeah. that sirloin, bomb. <laughs> delicious. And for just having salt and pepper and onion powder on it, I'll give it a thumbs up. Nice. Yeah, I mean, I, I like to go se- really simple with a good cut of meat, for sure, for sure. What about um, you? I agree with that. I... uh was blessed to go over to my friend Jared and Tiffany's house yesterday for dinner. And they made sticky ribs in the Mm. crock pot with pineapple fried rice. And it was stupid good. They've made it for me before. Um, But yeah, really, really simple. And I think the glaze is like soy sauce and apricot preserves. And I, I'm not sure what else, but um, it was, it was um, elite. It was spectacular. So I got to ask. Okay. So you get those sticky ribs. Do you like, was it like the long, like baby back ribs or was it like a spare rib or like what kind of rib was it? Like no, was it, it, was, it was like a baby back. So you can, and okay. you can pull the bones like straight out and then you eat like the, the sticky glazed meat, like with the fried rice. Oh, dude. Cause that's what I was going to, yeah. That's what I was going to say. Like, did you pull the bones out and then put that on top of your rice and just cut it yes. all up and, and then have sticky rib fried rice? Mm-hmm. Basically. Yep. Yeah. It was, um, man, it was something special. Yeah. Food always tastes good when somebody welcomes you into their home and cooks it for you. But like, it was really good. (laughs) Yeah. I agree 100%. It was really, really good. And, uh, yeah, you, you can't beat it the day before that, or yeah, the day before that actually wasn't half bad either. I had some mole Michoacano at like a little bitty, nothing Mexican restaurant out in the country. And it was, pretty spectacular as well <laughs> so not gonna lie those are, some, those are usually the best spots yeah yeah it was on a chicken leg quarter so i could like mm. pull the bones straight out and then i just use like the tortilla as like a glove and just grab the chicken and the sauce like off the oh, dude. yeah yeah it was really good like i ate until i couldn't breathe it was so good <laughs> so, <laughs> i love all that stuff it makes me happy sometimes you got to do that um life that steve happy you know what else makes me happy tell me what makes you happy uh learning what other people's favorite foods are we ask each other all the time how's your favorite this where's your favorite that blah 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 
Um, today, not on us. Let's talk about other people for a change. Us. That's right. <laughs> I thought we could talk about, um, you know, President's Day is coming. It'll be here before you know it. It's what not day is just... President's Day. <laughs> so this year it falls on the 19th of February. It's not just a day to buy a mattress, although it seems like a good day because they always go on sale. <laughs> um, President's Day is a federal holiday, just in case anybody out there didn't realize that. It's always celebrated on the third Monday in February. It was established in 1885 in recognition of George Washington, but in 1971, in an attempt to create more three-day weekends for workers nationwide, it was made official. Well, that is a cause I can get behind, although in the restaurant business, I don't get three-day weekends. But yeah. What's yeah. a three-day weekend? I don't even know what a weekend is. My God. Um <laughs> I so get it from time I, to time. Actually, sometimes I get four or five day weekends. And I'm not gonna lie, oh, they're great. But <laughs> notice how there's a clause. Mm -hmm. You know, you just spend too much money and you're like, I'm ready to go back to work. Yes, I need to be at work where I can stay out of trouble. I concur. Um <laughs> the White House mess, also previously known as the White House cafeteria, is a wood paneled tiny dining facility. I didn't know this until I started researching for this episode and it's located in the basement of the West wing. And it's just right next to the situation room, like where they watch all the world, the things happen in real time, like on all the TV screens. It's like the apparently, restaurant. apparently like the mess hall is like right across the street or right across the hallway there. Like the, the white house cafeteria, you know, I, I so. would get fired so quick because I would <laughs> the kitchen like well something big is happening I mean, like, what are you guys doing <laughs> with a sandwich in one hand and probably like a sparkling water in the other hand uh -huh. like guys what's going on hey what's yeah. up is anyone hungry like, would anyone like a sandwich like filming a tiktok live on my phone while something <laughs> earth shattering is happening and the doors like crack open and i'm like you guys i got lunch oh i my bad like i yeah i would, I would be like fired. I would Quickly. be like Horace Leachman in Bad Santa. I'll go make some sandwiches. I'm going to go make some sandwiches. That's a great, that's a good reference. <laughs> that would be me. I would be fired so fast. <laughs> They're about to like do something big for the United States and I would blow it all just because of a sandwich. Oh, absolutely. Or I'd be the person serving the banquet late. Um, in all fairness, though, sandwiches yeah. are life. Um, Sandwiches are really good. But we digress. Uh, and so <laughs> I want to talk about today about um, all the president's favorite foods over time and yeah. then into the present. Um, there I'm have sure been some good ones, and I'm sure oh, there's yeah. some very unique ones. Uh, 100%. Um, there have been quite a few things served over the years in the White House. There are five full time chefs on staff. The White House kitchen is equipped at any time to serve dinner to as many as 140 guests, and they can do hors d'oeuvres to more than a thousand people. So they have quite an operation over there. I would be so lazy and be like, what? A thousand people tonight? Ugh. <laughs> a, thousand, a thousand people? Don't you have president things to do? That would be my question. <laughs> exactly. Then I'd be told, uh, well, you've known about this for months. Why are you? <laughs> Pretending like you don't know. Can you imagine that? Okay, so for anybody out there that doesn't know what a BEO is, if you've never worked in the business, it's a banquet event order. It's like a sheet where caterings and parties and functions go, and it'll tell you like the amount of people, the the food that's on there, the size tables that you need, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Can you imagine the how terrible the BEO meetings are at the White House? That's true. Probably it hours long. Yeah. Like, okay, then at three o'clock, we have orders for 800 people, and it's going to be like, you know, the president of this country, and it better be these table runners, by God, or you're all getting fired. We've got 40 people who are allergic to gluten, 10 people who are allergic <laughs> to to meat. We got 12 50. people are level four vegans. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can only imagine. Oh. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. All right. So, okay, so they like so how's this gonna work? Are we gonna start with like George Washington and work our way up? No, these are in no particular order, Steve. I was I was uh a bit inspired and then like a little bit uh, scatterbrained. So we're just we're just gonna <laughs> go for it. I have right. like a rando list of president's favorite foods. <laughs> that is a very Steven thing to do. So I applaud you. Oh yeah, oh yeah. 
Um, all right, well, let's get into it. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt, apparently his favorites were fried chicken smothered in gravy, coffee mm. with as many as seven lumps of sugar. That is seven mm. tablespoons of sugar. Good God. Um, pigs yeah. in a blanket. That's pigs in a blanket are good, okay. Pigs in a blanket and turtle soup. I, that's one thing that I always want to try, so. Uh, you, okay, so you empty. haven't had it yet. No, I have not. So there's... There are some restaurants out there. You can find it. I mean, I don't think you're like missing. I think turtle has, I don't know. It pains me to say this because I've had a couple turtles as pets in my life, but I think it has a, it has a texture similar to clams in a soup. So it's kind of that same chewiness that you would get out of a clams, like in a clam chowder. Everything Um, minus all that sugar in the coffee. Sounds good. Dude. I just, I want my coffee to taste like coffee. I I'm saddened that a lump of sugar has kind of fallen out of modern favor in conversation because i think that's pretty great um as a measurement <laughs> so uh now it's pumps right everything's starbucks so it's like six pumps of this and four yeah. pumps of that um fried chicken smothered in gravy though like do you ever do uh-huh. brown gravy on fried do you like gravy on fried chicken first of all well i like it off to the side because i like to dunk okay so like, like, I don't like, like, tenders, or, like sweetie, or yeah but like chicken tenders or like parts like chicken pieces i can do like the pieces chicken tenders are always like the way to go but yeah if someone had like drum like for drumsticks or like breasts and thighs and stuff like that yeah i'd be about that dude i, I still like to dunk all that i don't yeah me. i like it too i was i was doing the you know very uh painstaking in about seven minutes of research for this entire episode um and i uh this made me think about like brown gravy. And I was like, I want, I want like fried chicken drumsticks with brown gravy. That's what I want for some reason. Like I'm going to have to make that happen at some point. It just, I don't know. It sounded good. Now pigs in a blanket. Do you do like a kolache dough or do you just do like a, do you, or is it like pig in a poke? You know, like you roll a pancake around a sausage or like, how do you like, what do you, yeah. Right. That sounds better than just like your regular kolache. You know, mm-hmm. only because every time I have mm-hmm. a pig in a blanket, the casing is so tough. Yeah. And the kolache is kind of just like either over baked. Really soft. Hard. They're all yeasty, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I, I haven't had a really good pig in a blanket, but I do enjoy them from time to time. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what I do. Are you ever going to come off this diet? Maybe you can you can eat these. I don't know. One day. One day. Okay. If I'm so, on vacation, all bets are off. Okay, then. Okay, then. Well, um... What I do is I like to take the little smokies, the, the cocktail sausages, and I like to put each little smoky in a mini muffin pan. And I like to put a pancake bat, pour pancake batter directly in it. Like it's a cupcake or a muffin, bake yeah. those. And you have like a totally dippable, like, yeah. It's like a pig in a blanket cake, pig in a blank cake, pig in, pig in a, a blank cake, a, a pig in a bluffin. Yeah, something like that. Like it's really good. So then if you do. Bacon with that pancake batter, is that still kind of a pig in a blanket? I think so. I love bacon and pancakes. Um, Hmm. Yeah. So Hmm. I was on this kick forever where I was trying to add protein powder to every baked good to see like how (laughs) I figure figure it out, like if if it was actually beneficial or not. Um, I can tell you the threshold in pancake mix is no more than half of the total amount of flour because it'll turn into a rubber bouncing ball really fast. Um, and then I just, I gave up on trying to make things like more healthy. It's like, I'm just going to eat it. Uh, (laughs) all right. FDR, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Uh, he liked extra gooey grilled cheese sandwiches. He liked to eat them alongside scrambled eggs, but I think his greatest accomplishment was that he served hot dogs to King George the sixth and Elizabeth the first. So Queen Elizabeth the mother. <laughs> I always thought of FDR as one of the greatest presidents ever. Ugh. So he just went from one of the greatest <laughs> to the greatest for that. Dude, he probably they were so they were probably so scandalized already by the hot dogs, and he probably went and did some business like he put ketchup on them. He just I mean, dude, do you know what? Yeah. <laughs> that is it doesn't get any more american than that that's the beginning of the end and then all of a sudden you know like in the in the late in 90s like tony blair just couldn't see eye to eye with us and it was because of that you know they hold a grudge like crazy yeah <laughs> i wonder 
Yeah, I'm, I, you know what? I never thought about doing like an extra gooey grilled cheese with next to eggs. But now I'm like, yeah, that does sound like it would be awesome. You know? I would put the eggs inside the sandwich, though. I, you know I, what I would do? Yeah. I would have like two extra gooey grilled cheeses. So it would be like a grilled cheese and then an eggs. The bread. Bread. Yeah. Yes. The Yes, the two pieces of bread are actually two grilled cheese. Now you're on to something. Now you're on to something. Um, let's talk JFK. He was born in Brookline, Massachusetts. Uh, he was a New Englander. Old money on the East Coast. So he liked all the traditional things. He was a Catholic, so they did fish on Fridays and no meat. And then New England clam chowder, corn muffins, and baked beans, like Boston baked beans. And I am down for all of that. See that, yeah. I'd be, I'd yeah. be about that, too. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you prefer a clam chowder, like New England-style clam chowder, to say, like, Manhattan clam chowder or, like, bully bays or... Do you have a preference for, I guess, seafood soup, type of seafood soup? I don't have a preference. As long as it tastes good, I will eat it. Mm -hmm. you know? I'm basically the same way. Because I, because don't be wrong. Like I've had New England clam chowders that are really good. And then I've had some that just suck. And mm -hmm. then same thing with like Manhattan and like different, different styles of chowders and all that. Like I, I don't discriminate. As long as it tastes good, that's all that really matters. Like if you put love into it, great. If it, if they're bland, then I'm not gonna eat it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel the same way. I think a lot of the secret to the great clam chowder is the amount of bacon that you put in it. The clams are important, but you need mm -hmm. salt pork or bacon. <laughs> like <laughs> no. yeah, I agree. Bacon makes everything better. Yeah. Well, it's hard for a person like me to like a New England style baked bean because they are not what I grew up with as the Texas baked beans. They're not sweet. They're not sweet enough. It's well, not see, like a barbecue baked bean, and that's what I I like. I I do more like the uh, savory beans personally. You know, like sweet beans are cool, but I prefer like I, I just don't care for them as much. You know what I'm saying? Well, it, I mean, it depends on what they're gonna be with. So I like a great you know ranch style beans or barracho beans or yeah um, pinto beans and cornbread, but. If it's going to be baked beans, then I want like mustard and brown sugar and ketchup. And I want like gooey sweet stuff in there. So I want My dumb self would probably try to refry those. <laughs> <They're just laughs> awful. Oh, why, why did I just get like an accent all of them? They're awful. These are awful <laughs> refried beans. <laughs> I guess I don't know what that accent was. And I got to incorporate the accent. Oh, man. <laughs> Although it sounds oh. more Jersey than anything else, you know? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm so thrown for a loop right I don't now. know where that came from. Uh, <laughs> I don't, don't know. know. I don't know. Um, LBJ, Lyndon Baines Johnson. Um, great freeway named after him up here in Dallas. Um, it's <laughs> a hellhole to drive on. Please, it's just terrible. Uh, lots of things named after him and his wife in the state. He was a native Texan. He loved black eyed peas. He was the right. first president to have a cookout on the White House grounds as well. He loved barbecue and black eyed peas. So do you think like all that, that was all going on in the background? All I hear is gotta get that boom, boom, boom. Like the actual group <laughs> black eyed peas. That'd be cool. <laughs> they weren't even born. We have to invent Steve. a time machine for that one, I guess. <laughs> we're gonna invent um, a time machine and then we're gonna <laughs> like go back in time with the black eyed peas so that way they could perform on the White House. Lawn. Oh Lawn. man, LBJ was having. I think I think actual black eyed peas have more talent than they do. Um, shots fired, okay. folks. So shots, shots, fired. shots fired. Yes, you heard it here. I said what I said. <laughs> uh, apparently, apparently, I want. I have to wonder, like, when this article was written because LBJ's weakness was apparently Fresca, which I get it because that was the time. But it goes on to say that he had a soda dispenser installed in the oval office i don't know what the frick a soda dispense i know what a coke machine is but yes do you uh, like fresca <laughs> i like fresca i like most all the carbonated beverages so pretty much all of them yeah yeah do you, you like know, fresca so okay this is where i contradict myself i'm not a big soda drinker doesn't mean mm -hmm. i don't ever drink sodas because every now and then you get that kind of craving I don't mind Fresca. It's good. It's it's uh, refreshing. It's refreshing. 
I see what you try to do there. Stupid. Mm. Ah. I never. <laughs> I never. Every, give me. You always, give me the pity laughs. <laughs> we. You get one where it doesn't work. You know. Oh, okay. Every now yeah. and then. Yeah. Sure. 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 Uh, Richard Nixon. This next one, Steve. You're going to be like. They should have impeached him for this. Um, he was not a crook, though. I don't know. He's not a crook. I like the salad that's named after the scandal. Okay. But anyway, uh, he yeah. liked to eat cottage cheese with ketchup on top. <laughs> yeah, Bro. he should have been impeached just for that alone. <laughs> just for that How alone. He got... What? That guy. Okay. Oh, gosh. Okay. Oh, so... that guy. <laughs> so the Watergate the scandal, right? Um, I you have, you, a Nixon salad. <laughs> have you ever <laughs> have you ever had Watergate salad? No, I haven't. Oh man. I might have, but I don't it's been so far that I don't remember. It's whipped cream. It has to be cool whip. Regular like homemade whipped cream will fall. You need something that's stabilized with and with oil is even better. Um cool whip, um crushed pineapple, mini marshmallows, and pistachio pudding packet. I was going to say, it sounds like green stuff. That's what my wife calls it. Green yeah, stuff. we call it green junk, but that's the technical name is Watergate salad. I have oh, not, well, yes, not I ever have figured out. Many, many times. Yeah, I've not ever figured out like why why the name. Um, but it, it just makes me think of Richard Nixon. It's pretty funny. So. Uh, all right. Um, Gerald Ford. Gerald Ford was born in Nebraska. Um, he liked pot roast and red cabbage. He also liked butter pecan ice cream, and he liked to eat the butter pecan ice cream on top of German apple pancakes. And I want—he sounds that. like a good old boy. I want all of that right now. And just a good old boy. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me. I mean, that all sounds lovely. I have never put red cabbage with pot roast, but I—it's not too late to start. You right? There was something I was going to get addicted to. It could be that. So. Do you like a German apple pancake? Or when you make pancakes, what's your go-to? Do you have a go-to flavor? Well, it's not German apple, but it sounds like it should be. Um, I just like plain mold pancakes. I like really? that. Yeah. I, I'm weird like that. I'm the I'm like a mix-in. I, I like mix-ins and texture. And, oh, I took my mom to lunch yesterday, and we had lemon ricotta pancakes, and they had yeah. lemon curd and strawberries. In between the pain. dude, well, it's really cool. okay. So if I ever go to a restaurant for breakfast and I get pancakes, yeah, I'll get all that stuff like you know blueberry or rad or like sure. some sort but of. you want pancake. somebody else to do it? But if yeah, if I'm making pancakes, <laughs> at home, yeah, no dice. Yeah. It's just no plain. Dice. There's a couple of things that I'm, but yeah, there's a couple of things that I absolutely I'm like I will absolutely pay somebody else to make this, and I know how to make it, and I can make it really well, but I'm not doing it. Um. <laughs> Yes, that is, <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a thing that exists. Um, Jimmy Carter was the one that was in charge of breakfast at home, according to his wife. And it was a good old country breakfast. Grits, cheese, e um, eggs, and coffee. They even named their dog Grits. <laughs> okay. And then their favorite dinner was pork chops with red-eye gravy and collard greens. Do you know what red-eye gravy is, Steve? Yeah, isn't that like... It's like kind of like the au jus and you can add like some coffee and uh -huh. things like that. But yeah. Yeah. It's like brown gravy basically, but it's not heavily thickened or doesn't. Yeah. Thicken. I was going to say it's real loose. I, I like, I think that it's better with ham because the salt stands up to that, the bitterness in the coffee. Um, but yeah. some people like it with pork chops too. Interesting. Yeah. I also want that right now. See, we can't record when I'm hungry because um, yeah. This is, it's unfortunate. <laughs> it's unfortunate. This All is right. <laughs> Ronald Reagan, um, which I've been asked all my life if I'm related to, and the answer is no. Um, there were quite a few groups of Reagans, and I am not related to him. Um, that's how I tell people to spell my last name, and then they also get it wrong because now everybody's too young to know who he is. Um, but uh, some of his notable favorites, meatloaf, mac and cheese, uh, jelly beans, monkey bread, chocolate cake, fudge brownies. But he was obsessed with jelly beans. Um, 
almost every month, he would order more than 300,000 jelly beans and they would be in bowls around the Capitol and the White House and other federal buildings as well. He just sounds awesome. Every time I think of Ronald Reagan, I always think of Back to the Future. Remember like when he goes yeah. back, he's like, Ronald Reagan, the actor, and who's the vice president? <laughs> Jerry Lewis? <laughs> uh, I always, I was actually thinking about that the other day, but I didn't realize that he liked to have jelly beans all over the White House. That's kind of dope. Yeah, it's been a really long time since I've had jelly beans or monkey bread. Um, I'm kind of in the mood for meatloaf, though. Like, not gonna lie, yeah. not gonna lie. Um, all right, let's go to George H. W. Bush. So, uh, the one from our generation's dad. Uh, they would keep it really simple in the White House. Eggs, hot dogs, and beef jerky. But the one thing that was consistent is that they put Tabasco on almost everything. He sounds very vanilla. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. Tabasco is like starter hot sauce. People out there, he, okay. He's trying to put that edge, with, you know, with the Tabasco. But that sounds very <laughs> plain. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, you know what? I can appreciate when people like what they like and they know what they like. You know, I don't have to like Ooh. it. So, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, you know, crapping all over it, but I'm just saying, like, I would have thought he would have had like some, you know, being from Texas and all that, like, you know, barbecue or something. Well, there, I think there definitely has been a lot of barbecue all throughout that family, but apparently through his time in the White House, it was very, very simple and reserved. Now, eggs, that's one of those things where I will not cook them at home if i buy a dozen eggs and i crack one open i'm like i'm I, i'm all set i don't want it anymore but if i go out somewhere and they have eggs i'm like yes please put an egg on top of this but i don't want to do it yeah i do not yeah. want to do it i don't oh, want to do eggs it all the time i like eggs but i want them out i don't want them out. <laughs> um bill clinton bill clinton was a huge fan of mcdonald's burgers uh but he had an emergency heart surgery in 2010 so he decided to go vegan so now he's figured out how to make all his favorites vegan. And that's what he does. He does like lasagna with no cheese, chili enchiladas made with meat substitute, et cetera, et cetera. Womp, womp. But yeah, he used to throw down some McDonald's back in the day. Be careful, Absolutely. Mr. Whitney, because I heard a lot of those meat substitutes are high in cholesterol and sodium. Yeah. Yeah. It's all the things they have to put in there to make it taste like meat. The better <laughs> yeah. alternative, I mean, look, I'm not a doctor or nutritionist or any of those things. Right. But the better alternative, if you're trying to stay away from that stuff is just to figure out how you like vegetables and use them for that stuff. Like lentils so and eggplants. And mushrooms. While he was in the white house, huh? Yeah. Lots of McDonald's. <laughs> you got to do like, you got to do a, a Clinton impression now. Like I want a big Mac. <laughs> I thought yeah. I don't do I don't do it, Bill Clinton. That was but, pretty good though. <laughs> you just have to make your voice crack for the most part. And... Uh, <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> I, I wonder right. what he would get though. Like, was it breakfast? Was it lunch? It was or was it nice. breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Because I, nice. if you know what, I'd be honest. I'd be ordering a ton of like McGriddles and McMuffins personally. Okay. I have a different perspective on this. Okay. So if I was the reason I go to McDonald's now, there's two reasons I've been drinking or I don't want to do anything. If I had an entourage of 50 people that had to go with me everywhere, the last place I would go is McDonald's. <laughs> I'd be like, Oh, this, this seems like in a whole affair. I don't want to do it. This is a whole event now. No, thank you. I, I'm not going to lie. If if I worked at the McDonald's that he would go to or get food from, I would make sure that McFlurry mach machine worked. Dude, they would have the ice cream would be working every single time. That's a really, right? good, that's a really <laughs> valid point. <laughs> um, let's go over to the other George Bush. It's George W. Bush. Apparently, when he was in the White House, Tex-Mex favorite food it would be beef tenderloin grilled cheese sandwiches lots of huevos rancheros enchiladas and fajitas but are you ready his absolute favorite thing cheeseburger pizza you you know when you first said tex-mex and then you said beef channel i was like that's not tex-mex okay like, yeah, yeah 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 and then beef you start going to comma, like, oh, comma. Okay. <laughs> like, 
Text Max comma. That mm -hmm. and then a cheeseburger pizza. That sounds like the best of both worlds. Yeah. Yeah. I am a huge fan of a cheeseburger pizza. Um, there's no shortage of Tex Mex around me. And I'm a little bit sad because I, I, I'm going to go to North Carolina and I'm like very worried about my queso consumption. Like, I don't think I'm going to be able to hit my quotas. Um, <laughs> I'm like super sad about this. I don't know what I'm going to eat. I'm going to have to cook everything. I, I'm so I'm sad. I'm just to like what the cheeseburger pizza consisted of. I'm not too, too worried about the Tex Mex. I want to know more about this cheeseburger pizza. Like, yeah, this is just well, ground beef and like cheese. Like, did he throw pickles on there? Did he throw? You know what I'm saying? Like, every every cheeseburger pizza I've ever loved has had like the whole shebang: does tomatoes, it have onions, lettuce, right, a little ketchup. Does it have the bread? The hamburger well, buns? No, I think it's a. I, you have to do it. Like this is how. <laughs> so this is how you would do it. You would get your hamburger buns, in my opinion, and you just toast them. Real good, and then just break them up like croutons. Mm -hmm. And then technically, it would be all uh, elements of a cheeseburger. But I also have to have bacon with my cheeseburger, so uh, there's also that. Yeah, I just see it making it difficult. I want an egg on a burger, so then this pizza would have eggs on it. So it would be like really complicated. It would be super complicated. <laughs> yeah. All right. We, uh, we always have this, to be so complicated. <laughs> this brings us to Barack Obama. Apparently, he has a family recipe for chili um, that he's been making since he was in college. And so his favorite place to go while he lived in D.C. was Ben's Chili Bowl, which is apparently like a famous local spot there. But in the White House, he had a soft spot for snacks, like game day snacks, like nachos, queso, guacamole, popcorn, and trail mix. Yeah. I feel like he would be the type who would put beans in his chili. I was just going to say, like, okay, so he lived in Chicago, and I just feel like his chili probably had some weird crap in it that doesn't go in chili. And Jacob Roth, you can come for me. I don't care. Like, I <laughs> just, like, there's probably noodles or some stupid shenanigans in this. I was going to say, he probably did Cincinnati style. <laughs> just Midwesterners. Leave a chili alone, okay? It didn't do anything to you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But All right. you lost me with the chili, but then yeah. you got me back with, like, the game day snacks. You got me back with the nacho because I will never turn down the nacho, and it doesn't have to be good either. There's no prerequisite <laughs> for nachos. Like, it can, you know, oh, it's, it's a nacho? Okay, great. Yeah, it's funny because even, I'm like, in. that Rico's cheese, it's, like, all chemicals. I'd still eat it. Dude, I only want that Rico's cheese if it's a questionable temperature served from a high school sports concession stand. That's, that's <laughs> That's where you eat that stuff. Um, yeah. Let's take it back all the way to the first president. We George Washington. Apparently his favorite food was hoe cakes. You can think of this as a cornbread pancake served with honey. Um, yeah. I want that. I want that in my life, but I want like goat cheese on top. Is that weird? I want goat cheese and honey on like a cornbread pancake. You know, I thought you were going to say it was his favorite thing was cherries. Wasn't he the one that chopped down the cherry tree? <laughs> that's like a total, that's not even, did never happen. <laughs> well, you know. It's a fa fake story. Fake it's, news. It's a rumor. It's a rumor. We're going to put it on the internet so that way it'll be true. He put on Facebook. He'd, see, that's the problem. He didn't put that story about the cherry tree and the lie on Facebook, so it wasn't Facebook official. That's what he gets for not quoting it. It's what you get for being born way back when, guy. <laughs> Back when it was um, all rustic and whatnot, I bet that well, I bet it was good though. That sounds pretty tasty. Yeah, I mean, so there's a place in Austin called Magnolia Cafe, and they have a cornmeal pancake, and they're really, really good. When I first tried it, I was afraid it was going to be really dry or heavy, but they're not. It's nice. really tasty. Um, I think that you can't. I think that you have to sub part of the cornmeal for a flour. Like, I don't think yeah. you can completely replace it. I think that's what keeps it from being, like, so heavy. And that's um, what makes a true chef, to make yeah. those nice, light, airy, and mm -hmm. more importantly, delicious. Delicious. Sometimes I like to separate the eggs in pancakes and, like, whip the whites. Just I like that. A little, a little bit fluffy. Um, yeah. Uh, let's fast forward all the way to Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a fast food fanatic. So... Burgers, fries, burgers with bacon, chicken mm. sandwiches, and apparently pasta. 
I also like fast food. A lot. I also like pasta. I also like pasta a lot. I'm not I gonna also lie. Like fast food yeah. too. I had I had baked ziti probably four times in the last two weeks. So, <laughs> so I I forgot what team it was. I think it was the Alabama football team when they won the national championship. They went to the White House and Donald Trump had like a McDonald's for him or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mm -hmm. most people were ripping on him for it, and I'm thinking to myself, I kind of wish I was there. That would have been pretty cool. <laughs> well, you know, I mean. Like the presentation of McDonald's, it, you know, it's it's all presidential and all elegant. I mean, they made that look cool. What's not impressive about like a pyramid of cheeseburgers? Like exactly. I don't know. I'd, I'd go for it. Um, I would have been that one guy though. Like Mr. Trump, uh, are there pickles in here? Because I don't like pickles. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> that's like, the story you're about out of here, sir. You're out of here, Mister. And Steve yeah. got kicked out of the White House. <laughs> yeah. All right, John Adams. This one is really interesting. Um, hard cider. Hard cider. <laughs> That's it. Hard oh. cider was this guy's favorite food and drink, apparently. He started <laughs> drinking it every morning while he was attending Harvard and then always had it at the White House. So there you are. <laughs> was it like uh, Mike's hard cider or Angry Orchard cider? I wonder. He was uh, a party animal, huh? Um, uh, old never... party party animal <laughs> <laughs> huh, hard cider i i'm not much of a cider person but when i do get it i think to myself why don't i drink this more but that's kind of cool yeah i mean i like some of the harder ciders but a lot of them to me taste like kool-aid with alcohol and i have to be really uh, careful because if it's too easy to drink then i'll drink too much of it um <laughs> yeah easy to do yeah all right, Thomas Jefferson, he discovered macaroni, a.k.a. he discovered, like, shaped pasta, shaped dried pasta um, during his travels to Europe, and he's credited with popularizing it um, in the United States. He brought a machine from Naples, Italy, to make the pasta, so it was probably just, like, a, a double-wheeled um, press, kind of like what goes on the front of a KitchenAid now. So, And I'm glad he did, because I friggin' love pasta a lot. Me, too. Mm -hmm. Pasta is good, too. If there's anything I like almost as much as a good sandwich, it's pasta. Yes, I agree. Um, did you ever watch Emeril Lagasse back in the day? Not really. No. He he rolled up to this Filipino spot one time, and they were making, like, pho sandwiches. Nope, it wasn't it. That's not the noodle. Hold on. Stand by. Chow mein <laughs> sandwiches. I remember it vividly because I've watched it, like, five times and just gone, like, I want that in my life i want that in my mouth um and i don't know how to make it happen like i don't want a sandwich that has chow mein in it dude hey, let me guess he was like bam 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and that was like the first five minutes no i like that guy he has yeah. a he has a shtick definitely but he he got me excited about food well anyways sure. he was a great president for bringing pasta <laughs> for americanizing pasta yeah, Thomas Jefferson, for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, James Monroe was a native Virginian, and he liked to eat spoon bread, which is pretty similar to a bread pudding. But spoon bread can be savory or sweet. Okay. Have you ever made, made or heard of spoon bread? No. Mm, me neither. <laughs> um, <laughs> William Henry Harrison, a noted naturalist, he liked nature a lot, and that might have contributed to his... Um, Taste for this animal. Can you guess which animal? Um, a honeybee. I don't know. I'm just throwing out <laughs> random stuff. <laughs> Think a tiny mammal that we don't really eat anymore. Tiny mammal that we don't eat anymore. A rat. Squirrel. No, I was close. Yeah. It was very oh, popular at the time. So squirrel, squirrel, squirrel? stew. Uh, yeah. yeah. I haven't yet. Stew. I want to. It's like very stringy rabbit. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. So they get a lot of exercise on my street, so I can't imagine that they... Yeah. It's like, oof. <laughs> All right, I can't even think about it. I might, like, pass a raccoon the other day that was dead. I just... Uh, I can't do it. Um, all right. <laughs> uh, Zachary Taylor. Zachary Taylor 
loved these little bits of fried dough called kalas that would eventually be known as beignets. Mm. Fried dough covered in powdered sugar. Um, Millard Fillmore loved all types of game items. That was beef, turtle, fish, duck, chicken, pigeon, and drum roll please, sweetbreads. This guy loved sweetbreads. Official favorite president of all time now. (laughs) He he beats FDR, and FDR is pretty awesome. (laughs) Nice, 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 nice. I talk like I was alive in those days, you know? (laughs) I just, I'm just like, uh, I don't know what they did, so I don't say favorites. Um, <laughs> Abraham Lincoln said gingerbread cookies were one of his um, favorite foods, which I'm like, are you a gingerbread Abraham cookie Lincoln, I Okay, I don't like this soft, like a gingerbread man cookie. I like like a ginger snap, like a crunchy ginger snap. Yeah, like I can see that. Do you have Trader Joe's over there? Not in West Texas. Yeah. Have you been to one, though? Yes, yes, I have. They make a triple ginger snap and it has like little bits of candy ginger in it and so much so that it's like spicy in some bites and I like that a lot. Hmm. So do you like ginger gingerbread? From time to time, yeah. I can do them. Um, apparently he was also really fond of bacon. So if you studied gingerbread, like actual gingerbread, like a loaf of gingerbread with like crispy bacon, then I would be down. I was going to say, I would imagine making a gingerbread cookie with some bacon grease in it would be pretty dope. Do you do you remember how you said that you wanted to put bacon in fruitcake? No, but it sounds like something I would say. You totally said it. We recorded it. I, <laughs> I don't recall. I barely remember what I said five minutes ago. Half the time. Come on. I don't remember. I don't remember. All right. This next guy, Harry Truman. <laughs> Harry Truman loves steak. Um, but you know what else he loved? You know, what what was it? He loved for his steak to be well done. He was very specific about it. I'm so sad. <laughs> he really was an awful president. I'm so sad. I, I'm not saying that if you're a bad person if you like well done steak. I'm just <laughs> saying you're wrong. Dude, I just, I mean, it's okay to be wrong, I guess, but. I am throwing shots out there. Shots fired. Shots fired. <laughs> All right, well. In, into the current era, we'll finish our list out with Joe Biden. Loves ice cream, doesn't care what flavor it is. Every ice cream shop that's on a stop that he's at, he will he will go there. I wonder if, if he's he visiting lo- a city, he will go get ice cream. I wonder if he would eat licorice ice cream because licorice is disgusting. And if you made it into an ice cream, it would be pretty disgusting. What kind of cigarette would you eat that makes like- licorice ice cream? <laughs> Well, I was thinking of like cream. something worse, but I'm like, no, licorice is pretty awful too. That's that's. Are you gonna try to ruin ice cream for me? Because I don't appreciate that. <laughs> You're gonna make it your life <laughs> mission to find licorice ice cream now, aren't you? Uh, no, I'm not. I can't even. Just you saying it, I can smell and taste black licorice <laughs> hard candy. And it's ruining it right now. I haven't even had dinner and you're like almost ruining it. I know. I've kind of lost my own appetite now. (laughs) To all of our listeners out there, I don't like, I've never had licorice ice cream, nor would I ever endorse it (laughs) or condone it or anything along those lines. Well, Steve, we've talked about what all the presidents like to eat. You and I have talked about what we like and don't like several times, but I'd like to put you through a speed round. Are you game for that? Do it. All right. Pineapple on pizza. Yes or no? Yes. Raisins and sticky buns. Yes or no? Yes. Raisins and cookies. Yes or no? No. Ketchup on a steak. No. Does it matter what kind of steak? No. Okay. Cake or pie? Cake. Refried beans or barracho beans? Refried. Hot fudge or chocolate syrup? Hot fudge. Thin crust or stuffed crust? Stuffed. Soft pretzels or crunchy pretzels? Soft. Soft tacos or crunchy tacos? Soft. Peanut butter and grape jelly or peanut butter and strawberry jelly? Peanut butter and strawberry jelly. Crunchy peanut butter or creamy peanut butter? Crunchy. Eat raw cookie dough or the cooked cookie? Raw cookie dough. Nutella or cookie butter? Nutella. Mustard or ketchup on hot dogs? Mustard. What goes on grits, sugar or salt? Salt. Do you do your steak in a cast iron skillet or on the grill? 
Cast iron. Raw oysters are fried oysters. Raw. Chocolate and mint go together or no? Yes. Powdered sugar donut or chocolate glazed donut? Chocolate glazed. And finally, what is the superior brand of chocolate? Name Dark. it now. No, the brand. Oh, brand. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi. Uh, Hershey. Ding, 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 ding. You know what you win? Nothing. You get to but... keep being my co-host. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I thought you were going to say, like, just ridicule. That was lots fun. Lots and lots of ridicule. That was fun. I just wanted to rattle some things off. Some things we had discussed before and some that we hadn't. <laughs> I know. Thanks people, for are, people who listen to the podcast are going to be like, you said this in another one, dude. What? Now you're changing <laughs> your mind? You said pineapple does not go on pizza. And now you say it does. Look, I it depends on my mood. It's Monday. Uh, tomorrow it could change. Like it was a very Monday Monday. If I need pineapple to comfort me in my time and eat on a piece of pizza, pineapple then that's what we're jam. doing. <laughs> I think my brother got me into that. Then that's what you we're know, doing. Was, yeah. I just always used to say no when I was younger, so that way people wouldn't bash on me. But now I'm like, you know what? I don't care. I'd eat it. Now you don't care what people think. <laughs> True. Stephen, have you ever like specifically celebrated President's Day with any type of food? Like, have you cooked out or? Had no, because usually I work. Usually yeah. I'm working. Yeah. What about same. you? Yeah. No, same. I there's nothing specific. I mean, I suppose it kind of follows like in line with other federal type holidays where people have an extra day. Maybe they barbecue and stuff, but I, I doubt it because it's January. So like, nobody's outside. So true. Or February. It'll be February. Excuse me. So it'd be January today yeah, for a little bit. A more days. A little but... bit longer. But yeah. Um, okay. Well, I was just wondering. I, I, I think some people will use a, a long weekend as an, ex, you know, not an excuse, right? But like a reason to get together, and maybe you have like game day stuff. And and then I always think too, like President's Day is close enough to Super Bowl season, and maybe it's like Super Bowl snacks and stuff. So I don't know. Anybody well, out there, if you do something besides work, sleep in, or buy a mattress on sale, like, won't you let us know at the Food for Thoughtcast on Facebook and Instagram, or hit Stephen up at ChefStephenGonzalez.com. Yeah, Tell us what you're cooking for President's Day. I know it's nothing, because I'm just being silly, but please, tell us what you're up to. Tell us what you're eating. We're Steven, even doing fast food now. Uh, Yeah. What and are you ice doing? Cream. <laughs> fast food and ice cream. I like it. Fast food and ice cream. Uh, Steven, what are you cooking this week? What's going on with you? Uh, work and mm. stuff mm. And, and more stuff, stuff, with mm -hmm. stuff and a side of stuff. Mm -hmm. and a side of stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I haven't really thought about it. I'm I'm so jonesing to be making some videos right now, but I have been so uh, busy that I just can't. So yeah, you know. Eventually, I, I will get around to it. I I get that. I get that. Yeah, but but it also is kind of hard when you're doing like meal prep. So maybe I'll do a video about meal prep, but it's just gonna be all like chicken and vegetables and whatnot. So I probably won't get a whole lot of views off that. But you still. totally you totally could though. I mean, hey, oh. there's there's more people out there than you think that are wanting like meal prep and healthy food ideas and whatnot. Hey everyone, so. it's Jeff Steven. What's meal prep today? Actually, you know what? <laughs> That sounds a lot cooler than I thought. So I do need to film another. Uh, I would like to do another introduction video too. You know, like the the ones where you just kind of like lean over with your hand on your head. Yep. You can do another one of those. I like it. I've already got it planned out. Um. Well, for folks like us chefs, it's really easy to have a specific goal in mind or a couple of ingredients in mind and know exactly how they can work together. And then it won't take as long, right. To throw some meals out, but just think about that. Maybe your audience is like, I don't know how to organize this. I don't know how to make the list. I don't know what goes with what that's where you come in. That's true. I'm just saying, what? Steve, we, we, we gotta go, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gotta finish up this Monday kicking the we... shin. We got to go finish up this Mondayest of all Mondays. I would like to podcast shout out really quickly. There are a number of podcasts out there that support us. So I'm going to shout them out week by week. We've talked to you about the um, wonderful folks over at Ponastar Travel and David Dollar and Jen Novotny. 
at the Main Street Electrical Podcast. But I also want to shout out David Dollar and Dr. Earl and Michael Nip over at the Deuce Cast Movie Show. Frequently mention um, our show by name. So appreciative of the support. And I know all those thank guys you. listen. So thank, thank you very you. much. They, they all give it a spin every week. Um, and then they report back saying things like, you don't know what's good. You put pineapple on pizza. <laughs> and your movie tastes just terrible. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Those guys are huge supporters. And ice cream on and now, <laughs> those guys are huge supporters and they're really big fans and I'm big fans of them. So I can't say thank you enough. Um, Steve, let's go. Bye. Bye. That's a wrap for today. Until the next episode of the Food for Thought cast, make good food, eat good food, share it, and be kind to one another. Thanks so much for listening today. You are part of what makes us special, and we are so glad you joined us. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, and leave a review. Just like food, delicious podcasts are better when you share them with others. Come back for seconds wherever podcasts are served, and we'll catch you in the next episode of the Food for Thoughtcast. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at the Food for Thoughtcast or at www.foodforthoughtcast.com where you can link to all podcast players or you can send us an email at foodforthoughtcmc at gmail.com.